This video will tell you everything you need to know about Car Curry. Car Curry is a mid-range pseudo combo deck in Tengu plant format that really got its first archetype debut during this era. The deck focuses on making heavy synchro plays to net advantage and quickly create powerful boards of boss monsters that overwhelm your opponent. Now before we highlight all the different cards that are in the Car Curry main deck, there is one thing we really need to talk about with Car Curry cards. And the first thing is that all the Car Curry monsters outside of their synchros have this clause at the start of their text, which is this card must attack if able. So if you don't know what that means, that means in any situation, if you have an attack position Car Curry on your field and you enter battle phase, it is forced to attack. So it's something that doesn't come up a ton, but is definitely something to be aware of, which is if you have to normal summon a car curry you have to make sure that you don't summon it in main phase one if it's weaker than your opponent's attack like for example this card when it's normal summon gets to search a car curry card so the best play to summon this card is if your opponent has a monster on the field is you go to your battle phase you go back to your main phase two kind of like evenly matched and then you normal summon it then you can get your search which is the healthiest way to do this now this clause does come up even for this card which is the recruiter of the deck which basically Sometimes if you want to crash to get something bigger, say you don't actually have something bigger, just remember the card that you bring out has to summon an attack position, which means it is forced to attack. And that's weirdly relevant in a lot of situations. So just something to be aware of if you want to crash and then summon out like a Komoichi. Um, just know that that Komoichi will have to attack if able. So all of these cards have that clause. The second clause to talk about is most of the Karakuri monsters have this second clause on them when this face up attack position card is selected as an attack target change it to defense position now some of them say something along the lines of if it's selected as an attack target change its battle position which means like in some cases if it's in defense it'll have to switch to attack others just specifically say that when they are attacked in face up attack position they switch to defense position so it's something to kind of think about when playing the deck or playing against it that their battle positions can change this can be really relevant when the synchros are on the board but we'll kind of get into that a bit later but yeah these are those are the two most important details to know about car curry monsters in general and the switching battle positions and forced to attack if able those things are th something you have to always be thinking about when playing the deck or playing against it so you don't run into a an issue where you accidentally summon something and are forced to attack into your opponent's monster and it, it it's a really bad feeling all right so next thing i want to talk about is the different monsters that typically exist in a car curry main deck um, I'm not going to go over all the Car Curry monsters because there are some that are kind of grief and no one really plays. Um, but this is like the main one. This is the bread and butter of the deck. This is probably one of the most important ones you need to know whether you want to play the deck or play against it. Is This card is Kamoichi or Nanishi, whichever one you want to call it. But um, this card's effect is that once per turn during your main phase, you can gain an additional normal summon of a Car Curry monster. So what this lets you do is it basically lets you make a little two card combo. You normal summon it, summon another one and synchro into any monster of your choice like a car curry monster for example and that's how you typically start a lot of your combo so this is the bread and butter this is the most important one you're typically playing around this card and let me be honest you are going to need to search it a lot of the time so um, we'll talk about some of the cards that actually get this card out um, the first one is going to be merchant this is when this card is normal summoned you can add one car curry card from your deck to your hand so card says like any card so you can actually search the car curry spells or traps if you decide to opt for them uh, a lot of people typically don't though but you know if you want to you can um, but yeah basically this says add a car curry card from your deck to your hand so this is a really powerful tool that can like you know add some consistency to the deck and you know access your kamoichis um, another card that can help you get kamoichi is going to be gen x neutron so this is a non-archetype card but it basically says once per turn during the end phase if this card was normal summon this turn you can add one machine type tuner monster from your deck to your hand so this card's actually kind of powerful an 1800 beater that is also a machine so it like can be synchroed with to make car curry synchros um, but it also can just search you Komoichi. So if it sticks on the field, then when you summon Komoichi, um, you can summon another one and then synchro and, you know, kind of start a whole combo in that way too, uh, which is really cool. And then the last card that 
typically helps get you your Kamoichi is going to be Nisamu. This is kind of like the giant rat of the deck, or more specifically, like an X-Saber Emmer's Blade. Uh, when it's destroyed by battle, you can special summon one level four lower card curry monster from your deck and face up attack position. Um, so again, the must attack of Able Claws is really relevant. Emmer's Blade can just run in and attack your opponent's monsters and go into like a Dark Soul in defense and just pass. This card cannot. You have to summon that monster and that next monster has to be able to attack as well. So um, you kind of have to plan around that when making your plays, right? But yeah, this card is really fantastic for just kind of getting the card curry monster you need at a given time. It, you know, it's just a, a toolbox sort of card. Another card we should talk about is going to be quick. So this is a very relevant card. It's not a searcher or combo starter necessarily, but it can be. This card says when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard. Um, select one level four lower monster, car curry monster in your graveyard and special summon it in face up defense position. So this is a really great way to revive some of your tuners that are in the grave and get a one card synchro play if your opponent has something weak on the field. So it's really, really powerful as a comeback tool. And also because your synchro monsters typically can special summon a car curry from the deck. So we'll look at them. We have Beret and Beredo. Both these monsters, when they are synchro summoned, you can special summon one car curry monster from your deck. So that means you can summon out the quick and use it as a tool to extend your plays, right? If your opponent has a lower health or lower attack monster or lower defense monster on the field, um, when you make a synchro play into like Beret, you can special summon out quick and then attack over your opponent's monster to get a tuner back from the grave or and extend your plays. So this card's very relevant, very strong. Um, and then lastly we have a couple that are typically there for your combos so you have watchdog which is just a level four tuner it has an effect where if you it, it can't be destroyed by battle when it's in attack position so if you crash into your opponent's monster it can buff all car curries by 800 this can come up in weird otk situations but it's not super relevant um and then yeah, I mean, it's just an 1800 defender. You're typically just using this as a level four tuner to access your eight so you can make Beredo, um, which this one is a bit different than, than this one. Beredo says that when a car curry monster changes its battle position, once per turn, you get a draw card. Um, and then Beret lets you change the battle position of a monster on the field. So there's weird different ways to use this, but um, just important to know that this is one that kind of generates you advantage once you get it. So people typically want to go for eight, um, although seven is a lot easier to access in this deck due to Kamoichi plus a level four being the way to do it. Um, and then there's one other card, which is going to be Strategist, or yeah, Car Curry Strategist. Its effect is when it hits the field, you can change the battle position of a monster. Um, so you typically summon this off of Beredo or after you've made a couple Beredos and then you just summon out the Nispachi and then it'll change its battle position and let you draw like one or two cards. Really, really powerful in the combo. And I almost forgot, I can't forget this card, but we got to talk about Hypa. Hypa is basically like a goblin attack force. And I think some people don't opt to run it. I personally think it's very good because in conjunction with a Nisamu, this can basically make you, give you a free out to Thunder King. It's a 2100 attack beater so you can like summon it and attack and it's just a regular card curry non-tuner you know it doesn't have too many drawbacks also when combining it with Beredo, there's some situations where you can summon out the hypa and attack directly with it and then at the during the like main phase two it changes its battle position so it'll let you draw a card and so you can draw a card and do more damage than you could with strategist so it's just something to think about but these are typically the cards you're going to be seeing in a car curry deck there really aren't any other monsters that see play hypo would probably be the most strange one but like i said i personally really like the card um so yeah that's typically the monster lineup in addition to their two synchro monsters um and that hopefully kind of gives you a better idea of what the core car curry monsters look like just like any deck in tegu plant format car curry has its strengths and its weaknesses as a deck so there's some things I want you to consider if you're thinking about playing this deck. Um, so let's go over some of the pros. What are the benefits of playing Car Curry? And the first one I want to talk about is explosive turns and like OTK potential. Because of the fact that, you know, summoning a Nishi into like any other level four Car Curry special summons you out a seven and then can just keep going. You can keep summoning your Car Currys from your deck. You make these big synchros, which are 28 and respectively 26. Um, 100 attack and those monsters are going to be able to do a ton of damage in a single turn so with the right amount of cards you can kind of combo off and you know blow your opponent out out of nowhere which is 
really, really powerful if they don't have the tools to stop you. Um, the other thing to talk about is they have access to the Earth Synchro monsters that are really powerful. Since all the monsters are Earth, then you have access to things like Landois, which is extremely abusable in the deck. You can even go into like Barkeon or Naturia Beast. These are all cards that are super powerful in their own right, and only Earth-centric decks get to use them, so Car Curry benefits from that. Um, they also have a ton of synergistic consistency cards. Like I said, you know, we talked about Merchant being a searcher, we talked about Nisamu being a recruiter, and even Neutron being another searcher to get you your Komoichi or, you know, whatever tools you need. Um, so really, really consistent deck. Like you, you can kind of make a lot happen in with a very little amount. Um, and then it has fantastic stopping points. So the one thing to note is because Nanishi says additional normal summon, it means that you're not synchroing until you're first level seven. So as I talked about in my max C video, it's really actually difficult to max C this deck on the combo. Like for example, if you summon the Nanishi, summon another a level four, um, and you, if you want to synchro, your opponent has to max you right there. And even if you're forced to synchro, all you're going to do is give them a single draw because you don't even have to special summon from your deck if you go into a Car Curry synchro. Or you can always just make something like Landois and just sit on it. Um, there's all kinds of different options. That or their best bet is to activate Max C in response to the effect of the Beret to summon from deck, in which case you just summon a monster. Like specifically, Nisamu is a great one to just end on because it can become anything. And you just pass. So not really a big deal to get hit with max c so you know it's like for a combo centric deck that's a really powerful trait to have in this format which is also why this deck is ranked pretty high tier in the format some of the cons um that i would say that this deck has is it's actually very weak to interruption like you might not think it but effect veiler hurts this deck a lot even more so than cards like max c effect veiler actually does way more damage to this deck because of the fact that there's a lot of times you're actually relying on summoning a monster off the effect of these synchro cards. So if you don't, then they're just kind of a big beater that don't really do a whole lot on the field, especially Beret. Like this card doesn't accomplish a ton on its own if you don't actually get that summon from deck. So it really limits your plays if you get hit with an eruption and nothing feels worse than like summoning two monsters and then getting hit with like a solemn warning. Like it basically turns off your entire deck. Um, and then the other card to talk about is going to be Cyber Dragon. Literally every deck in Tengu Plant format side Cyber Dragon. So in your game twos and threes, since all of your synchro monsters that you're typically going for are going to be machine, you sometimes have to forgo going for more advantage and play a bit safer if you don't have a way to defend against Cyber Dragon. So, you know, summoning a Landois and kind of taking the minus one to just have like a powerful card on field or even going for an Aturia Beast is oftentimes better. Um, or even avoiding like the draw combo with Beredo and just ending on Stardust is sometimes just safer because of the fact that so many people side Cyber Dragons against your deck. Um, another card that is a huge problem for Car Curry is Thunder King Ryo. Um, if this card hits the field, like it turns off 90% of your monsters. The one downside to Car Curry is a lot of the monsters are very weak. Like the only Car Curry that's above 19 is going to be Hypa. The rest of them have very low attack points with like 700, 500, 0, 14. 600 and 500 you know you're not attacking over thunder king so you really need outs to it because again the just in the same right that like solemn warning hurts really bad if you use two cards to make a synchro if you're forced to use two cards to force out a thunder king it feels really really bad for you um and then the last like big issue with car curry or a big drawback i think there is is that it does require two cards to do anything right so majority of your combos are off of a kamoichi a lot of these cards independently don't accomplish a ton until you have a second card so for example summoning a merchant unless you have a way to keep that card on the field on your next turn it's going to be gone so even if you search a kamoichi you're still going to need to draw another car curry monster to make a play with it because again, a lot of your monsters are relatively small. The only exception to this rule would be like, or like probably quick because quick, you know, can bring a monster back, but that's in very specific situations. So it is something to think about that, you know, because of the fact that you're required to use two cards to make your plays, it can come at a cost of getting interrupted really hurts. And also, you know, sometimes you're sitting on one monster and it can feel really bad. Like if you just have Kamoichi, you're not really accomplishing much. So it is something to think about when playing the deck. All right, so now let's go over my build. And also, I, you know, I kind of like showing it off in paper just because you get to kind of see what the deck looks like in, with real cards. I definitely prefer that over Dueling Book, but I didn't want to make a million builds when talking about this. So um, we're going to talk about my build, how I think the best way to build Car Curry is right now. 
Um, I did recently take second place in a tournament with the deck, and this is after the modifications I made to make this deck, like, you know, a bit more consistent or a bit feel a bit better. Um, I, you know, just made some minor changes, but I, I still think it's worth talking about. So um, let's talk about the, the car curry engine first. So the first one we have, we are running the one hypo. Like I said, it's an out to Thunder King. We talked about one of the biggest problems for car curry is Thunder King. So having hypo plus the fact that I am running three copies of Nisamu here means that you can out the Thunder King. So like I said, we, we got the hypo. We got the two quick. This is a decent ratio because again, you're going to summon this out with your synchro monsters anyway. So it's not like heavy priority or a huge deal if, um, you know, you you aren't running three because you do need your graveyard kind of set up for it. But yeah, again, three copies of Nisamu. It's an out to Thunder King and also can get you any other combo piece you need. Since this deck requires two cards to summon, I feel like the card that can summon out anything you need on your next turn is one of the best cards you can run if you're trying to, you know, set up a play with one of your two cards, right? You need to find one or the other. So this can get you the tuner or the non-tuner. Um, then we're also running three copies of Merchant. This, of course, just more consistency, right? You know, we're, we're searching the cards we need. So we, we have the three copies of Merchant. And then, of course, three copies of Komoichi. You cannot go lower on this. This is, again, one of the most important cards in the entire deck. Um, and then lastly, these are just necessary for combo pieces. I don't necessarily think they're, like, ideal. I mean, Watchdog isn't bad, but... Um, Strategist, you can brick on this card a little bit, you know, so, you know, be, be wary with Strategist. It does come at that risk. You, you can potentially brick on it. Um, and then we're going to have the non-archetype cards. So, um, I, before in my previous list, I was running two Cyber Dragon. Now we are running one, um, and I reduced it down to one and one. And the main reason why I wanted to have one Cyber Dragon is it is an out to Thunder King, and it also is a combo starter. If you special summon the Cyber Dragon, normal the Kamoichi, get the additional normal summon, you can typically go 8-8 eight and eight and then get a draw 2. That's really good. But comes at a downside. If you're maxed out on 3 copies of Nisamu, it means that your opponent... Or, like, there's, there's a lot of times where you already have a monster on field, so the Cyber Dragon is just dead in hand. And I had a lot of scenarios where I would open both Cyber Dragon in hand, and it really sucked. So... I definitely wanted to reduce this down, but I didn't want to give up an out to Thunder King because I really feel like you need to maximize on outs to Thunder King. And I figured one of the better outs to Thunder King is Thunder King himself. You just summon the Thunder King and crash if they have it, um, if it's, you know, really hurting your board. But also this card isn't bad because, you know, it stuns other decks just as bad as it stuns you. Um, and then we also have two copies of Gen X Neutron. It's good to search the Kamoichi and, like, you know, it's 1800 beater. I do like it, but I don't like it as much as the other searchers in the deck. You know, I, I think two is a fine ratio. Uh, and then lastly, we just got our hand traps. So we're going to have three copies of Effect Veiler and then one copy of Maxi. This is my go-to ratio for hand traps in any deck. Um, but that's going to be it for the monsters. Uh, I think it's a really, really clean and consistent package. I, I feel like there's going to be very little chance of anything clashing with one another, and you're always going to have a play to make. All right, so moving on to the spells. Uh, we have the Trinity. You know, you always got to have the Monster Reborn, the Dark Hole, and the Heavy Storm. I think that's pretty standard. Book of Moon, nice out to Thunder King. Also sets up quick to swing over something that has, like, smaller defense to bring something back. Definitely a worthwhile card. I do run one copy of Instant Fusion. Now, the thing to know about this copy of Instant Fusion is I run it in game one um, because not a lot of people are maining Maxi, to be honest, because honestly, maining Maxi is pretty underwhelming. This is the only card that can get hard punished by Maxi in my deck. Otherwise, you know, I side this out in game two. So if they try to side it in Maxis, you know, I, I don't have to worry about it. Um, but this card does set up really powerful combos. It's a really nice extender. Like, for example, Sometimes you summon the Kamoichi and they effect Veiler it so you don't get the additional normal and then you can punish them by activating instant fusion. It's really, really good in that regard. So um, that's why we, I opted to run the single copy. Uh, Pot of Avarice is really important because you're synchroing and comboing off so much. You run through your cards really quickly. So this becomes live really fast in Karakuri, lets you get to draw, uh, which feels really good. Um, my body is a shield. I don't even know. It's a weird card to run because honestly, when I played it in tournament, it didn't come up for me a ton. But the one thing about it is it gives you that safety. Like I said, Karakuri hates interruption. So I like having the one copy of my body, my body is a shield because of the fact that it can prevent that interruption from, you know, ruining your day. You don't get torrential. The other card that it plays around is Herald of Orange Light. So if you're going against agents um, and they try to herald your synchro play, it can feel really terrible unless you have my body, then it feels insane. So, um, really powerful card. It's just kind of weird because, you know, 
like for assault morning and stuff obviously that doesn't negate it it just prevents things like dark hole and stuff after you've comboed off as well it's niche but i just like it for the safety it gives um then we have mind control i don't need to explain it best card in tegu plant format uh maxed out on mst i think this is important again you hate interruption you hate back row so i want to max out on mst i also like having a high spell count because of the fact that we run landois and i think landois is very relevant for turning off your opponent's gores and trag when trying to push for game after a combo so you want to run a lot of spells and that's why we're also running three copies of smashing ground it's landois fodder but also it is just a one of like out to thunder king this can smash over your opponent's thunder king and that is going to seal the deal. That is going to get you into making your plays, which is why I actually really like maxing out on this card. You could make a case to run D-Prison if you wanted to, if you didn't want to go for this route. Like, D-Prison is also fine if you want more traps instead of, you know, more things to react than just, like, on your turn. But I do really like this. It came up a lot where it just would out random stuff for me. So I personally love this ratio. I love this these spells. I think this is, like, really ideal. I really feel like this list is very optimized, you guys. All right, lastly, we're just going to talk about the traps, and we only have four, okay? So we got two Solemn Warning and a single Solemn Judgment, and then we have our Trap Dust Shoot. Trap Dust Shoot doesn't really need an explanation, and then, you know, these guys are just going to help you turn off summons that are crucial. Again, because we have reactive cards like Smashing Ground, and we have so many floaters that just kind of recruit into something new, I feel like you don't really need to interrupt too much if you just have the option to pop something or just swing over it on your next turn when you make a big synchro play. So I felt like this was the only like necessary package you really needed for traps. Um, like I said, again, you could make a case for D-Prison. I will say, I don't think Torrential's very good, especially because of how heavily you rely on sticking monsters on the board and also you know like with with running three copies of nisamu it can be very dead for you so that is something to think about but yeah that that is it for the main deck traps so obviously we had a 40 card main deck but now we're going to talk about the extra deck so um in the extra deck we have one copy of cybersaurus uh this, this should be obvious it's our instant fusion target it is our extender we run one because we run one instant fusion and it feels fine um, one copy of Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. Since we are maining Cyber Dragon and even siding Cyber Dragon, it is important to have this for the mirror match or, you know, even if you go against another machine type deck. It also can be helpful if your opponent summons a Cataster, which a lot of decks do. You can special your Cyber Dragon and then fuse with their Cataster. So it's a fantastic way to out that card. Um, we have one copy of Utopia just for the mind control rank four to steal your opponent's like Tengu or something and turn it off. It's, it's worthwhile running. Um, then we have one trishula doesn't need much explanation we run two Beredo. uh that's because again typically the combo you go into is komoichi into a level five so like cyber dragon komoichi level four synchro for eight special summon a level four synchro for eight and then get the strategist and draw two so um you need two for that combo and i don't think you need any more than that um Scrap Dragon, just one of the best level 8s. Stardust Dragon, also one of the best level 8s. Uh, two Shogun Beret. Again, this is just... One, like You could arguably bump this up to 3, but extra deck space is really tight in this deck. Um, but yeah, Beret is just... It's like your best combo starter. It gets you a big monster on the field, and then gets you anything out of the deck, and it's really, really easy to summon in this deck. Um, then we have Black Rose. Pretty obvious. Landois. Again, this is so great for playing around Gores, Trag... Or even just turning off your opponent's Monarchs if they're playing Monarchs. This just helps protect your board and helps like, enable your OTKs, which is why it's so strong. Um, Bryanak, Naturia Beast. Uh, you know, again, you can make a turn one Nat Beast with Komoichi plus Merchant because it's three and two and you get a search. So it's a really, really powerful turn one combo is just the turn one Nat Beast. If you have a way to protect it, like with a warning or something, you are golden. Uh, and then lastly, we have uh, Cataster, pretty standard level 5. It's because it's a machine, it also enables you to make synchro plays with it later. So if you need it to out something at the at the beginning, you can then later so use one of your level 3 tuners to make 8 and go into Car Curry combo with it. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that's it for the extra deck. All right, and this is going to be the updated side deck, guys. This is This is what I think is probably the best side for the deck right now, or at least for the build that I just showed you. Um, so... We're going to start out, we've got three copies of Royal Decree. I think, again, you hate back row, so if you go against a deck like Heroes, Heroes are very prevalent right now in the meta. Um, 
this is just going to deal with that. Any deck that has heavy back row, you don't want to deal with that. So, you know, with three MST, heavy storm, and three decree, you, you, you got the tools to deal with it, right? Um, the next card, this is so important, guys. I actually think this is absolutely necessary to side in Karkuri. It's one of the best cards to side in Karkuri. And that is two Chaos Trap Bull. You can side three if you want to, um, but this card basically says if a light or dark monster is summoned, you can pay 2,000 life points to negate and banish it. So if your opponent summons Cyber Dragon, you can use this as a counter side to that. When they side in the Cyber Dragons, you side in the Chaos Trap Bull, and it's also pretty relevant against a lot of the decks. A lot of decks make light and darks and, you know, helps you with a chaos matchup as well but i just really like this as a counter side to cyber dragon so you don't get blown out and it enables you to make like your machine heavy boards when you have this on the field so you don't you know feel like you're gonna get blown out um next up we have debunk uh again if they're siding in an eruption if they're siding in bailers or something like that or even if you go against a deck that runs a lot of trag and gores trag and gores are a big problem for this deck because you're trying to otk and they can be really pesky so this will just give you that safety and let you just send it in. Um, then we have a couple more hand traps. So we got the two max C down here. Um, this is just if you go against a very special summon heavy deck, you might as well add these in. Um, the two cyber dragon. I think that, you know, this is just for the mirror match. And also it's really nice to like... Go Typically what I'll do is I'll use Cyber Dragon in conjunction with Thunder King. I'll side out the Thunder King, you know, if I'm going second and put in Cyber Dragon and vice versa. So if you're going first, you put Thunder Kings in. If you're going second, you put Cyber Dragons in. Really, really nice, like, tool to use because these can... Cyber Dragon is a combo starter and also a side against the Mirror Match or against uh, any other machine type deck. And then the last two cards that I recently added to include into my side deck is going to be Puppet Plant. Um, again, heroes are so relevant right now. I think that this card is just a really powerful tool against it. For example, let's say you hit your opponent with a decree or something or a heavy storm and you can just puppet plant, steal their shining. You could just go off an OTK with that board. Can be really powerful. Um, but yeah, that, I, I just think it's like a really useful tool. It's super versatile, or you can even just synchro with your opponent's alias, stuff like that. Really, really cool card. But yeah, that is going to be it for the side deck. Super clean. Pretty versatile on what you can do. Uh, pretty good against a lot of the different decks in the meta. So lastly, I want to talk about some honorable mentions. These are some of the cards that either were historically played or that people consider teching. I want to talk about them and, you know, why or why not you should play them. Uh, the first one is going to be Barkeon. I just think this card is hard to make. The only way you can make it is with a Merchant and a Watchdog which means it's not super versatile. It's it's kind of hard to get out. And again, its effect is like super underwhelming unless you're against a heavy back row deck. And if you are, you're siding in Decree anyway. So um, it can be really good in certain situations, but I just think it's too narrow to run when the extra deck space is as tight as it is. The next card I want to talk about is Desynchro. Again, this card is really cool because of the fact that it can make these like crazy extended plays um, with your Car Curry monster is being able to like synchro summon something from deck and then desynchro and then resynchro and get another thing from deck. Um, it's really powerful. The only downside to this card is it's super weak to max C, but there is one upside to it if you were considering running it, and that is it does say target one synchro monster on the field and return it to the extra deck. So you can actually target your opponent's synchro monsters and they don't get a special summon the materials. So you can like bounce a synchro monster that your opponent has if you need to. So it is like a weird spot removal and extender that, you know, it's, it's a little niche, but it can be good if you want to opt to run it. I personally don't because, again, I really like to avoid being max seeable with my deck. Um, then we'll talk about some of these, these like car curry spell cards. So there's Cash Cash, which says change the battle position of one of your car curries to search a car curry card. Um, or add a level four or lower car curry monster. So it doesn't search a card. It just searches a monster. Um, but this can be kind of useful. It's really good in conjunction with your Beredo. You summon out the level eight and then you, you know, have a monster on field. You can like draw a card, search a card when you have this guy out. Um, so it feels really good in conjunction with that. My issue is main deck space. I just don't think it's very viable. And again, because you're so weak to Thunder King, I don't really like having extra searchers in the deck, especially ones that have to have a monster on field to be used. So it feels a little awkward. Um, Karkuri Anatomy, on the other hand, this card's like kind of weird. It, it's awkward because it almost reminds me of like a Shard of Greed. You know, you have to change your battle position a couple times. If you're already comboing off, this can actually be very plausible. 
Like for example, you can go into um, the level seven, you can go into Beret. Beret could summon out Strategist, Strategist changes its battle position, then you use Beret to change this battle position and then you can pop it and draw two cards. Kind of cool. Um, yeah, but yeah, basically this says whenever a car curry changes the battle position, uh, put a counter on it after two, you can pop it and draw two cards. Um, so it's, it's just a little, again, a little niche for me, probably not ideal, but can be kind of cool if you're interested in running it. Um, some other cards people might be thinking about like considering for the side deck, um, leeching the light. I think it's like potentially viable. Um, it's good against agents and stuff like that, of course. Um, the only issue I have is if you're already comboing off, you're probably able to out their board anyway. So it, it can create like a cool OTK scenario, but I just feel like other cards are more useful. Again, like Chaos Trapple, stuff like that. And I, I think I'd prefer to have Puppet Plant just for the hero matchup more because I think I'm more afraid of heroes than I am of agents. Another thing is this deck isn't very graveyard reliant. You can actually minimize your graveyard necessity, like drop quick down to like one copy or something. Um, and if you don't want to run the floater, um, I've seen some people even main die fi but you can technically side die fi It definitely is going to hurt a lot of the decks in the meta more than it's going to hurt you. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I personally don't like it because it clashes with the recruiter. It cr clashes with Nisamu. I don't want to deal with that. Um, I had some people bring up enemy controller. This card actually is potentially really good. Uh, the thing about it is if you have a copy of Nisamu and they have a Thunder King, you can crash into it and then enemy controller their Thunder King in the battle phase in, with like a quick. And so you can like destroy their Thunder King and bring back a monster. So it can be really powerful. It could arguably be more versatile than a like, you know, Book of Moon or something like that. I don't know. Um, or than the Hypa itself, but it just requires two cards to do to be useful versus like anything else, which is like typically one card. So that's why I'm not super sold on it but i do think there is potential with enemy controller this card is very versatile and very powerful then we have soul taker can make your opponent shinings miss timing if you're gonna opt to run smashing ground um you could potentially run soul taker the only thing i'll say that makes smashing ground really powerful is it doesn't target so let's say your opponent has two heroes on the field and like they potentially have a gemini spark you can activate smashing and if it's going to hit their alias they have to chain it right there because it, and because it doesn't target then after they chain gemini spark you'll kill whatever other monster is on their field kind of useful for smashing ground but again soul taker can make them miss timing i also just don't like giving my opponents life points in a deck that's trying to otk but there is merit to this card for sure uh, lastly, I talked about Torrential. You want to have monsters on the board, which is why I personally don't think this card is worth maining um, or running at all. It is definitely very powerful in the right scenario, but I, I just don't think it's a very good card for this deck specifically. All right, and then lastly, we have the Prison. I think this card is definitely worth like siding or maining if you're into that. Like I said, I have Smashing Ground. Um, my only downside to this is the Gemini Spark chain, where like if your you know your opponent attacks with an alias and you flip it, they can just Gemini Spark pop something else. Um, but the banish removal is definitely very valid, um, and again, it's just another out to Thunder King. So if you want to run that, run more trap heavy um, deck, you absolutely can. I still think it's completely viable of an approach. I just like having spell fodder for Landois because I think Landois is one of the best cards to make, and especially in game twos and three where you're afraid of Cyber Dragon. It's just really nice to slam a Landois with like two smashing grounds in hand. Um, it feels really good. I just want to talk about some of the primary combos of Car Curry, um, just so you guys have an understanding or an idea of how this actually functions. Um, so the main one is going to be you normal summon Kamoichi, additional normal summon, you synchro into seven, and this is honestly like probably going to be your shortest combo, right? You just make a beret and then berets effect, you just summon out like whatever you need. Typically it's going to be a Nisamu, um, but also because this beret can switch a monster to defense, there's a world where you can actually use its uh, like effect to summon out a quick and then use that quick, like you can use beret to change a monster's battle position and then attack over it with quick. So you can bring back your tuner, like your Kamoichi, for example, and then get like the Landois or another Synchro here. So that's one of your like main short combos. We'll kind of talk about a longer one now. All right, so the next combo is gonna be the draw two combo. Um, basically all you need for this to happen is either Cyber Dragon or Instant Fusion, a Kamoichi, and then any um, level four uh, Karkuri, literally any level four, even the level four tuner. But 
basically how this works is let's say it's cyber dragon you special summon the cyber dragon you normal summon the kamoichi you additional normal summon your level four you synchro for eight with the cyber dragon into beret or beredo beredo's effect lets you summon the level four tuner or level four non-tuner if you have the tuner you synchro for eight again get the beredo beredo's effect is going to special summon the strategist strategist will change its battle position and then these two will let you draw two cards so you end with two 2800 attack monsters and a draw two which is like really crazy because outside of like dark hole your opponent can't really do anything about that so um especially if you have like solemn judgment or even that my body is a shield you can like set a uh you can set the my body and pass and then your opponent actually will probably have a very difficult time dealing with this board the second combo is just going to be the same thing where you have the kamoichi and then you activate instant fusion to get yourself the cybersaurus um you synchro or you additional normal summon here then you synchro for eight get the burrito burrito gets the level four synchro for eight again which summons strategists and then switch your attack and you can draw two cards so that's another pretty common combo you know again it's basically any way to get a level five on field plus you know a three and a, a three and a four <laughs> really <laughs> kind of weird the other thing to talk about is going to be the turn one nat beast it's pretty simple just normal the kamoichi additional normal summon the merchant and then you're going to search a card one thing one advice i can give when searching if you already have another monster in hand like a non-tuner then it's always good to just search another copy of kamoichi but if you don't have another non-tuner or if you don't even have another monster in hand the best card to search generically is going to be nisamu because this card is going to slowly stall out and get you whatever else you need until you have another play to make so if you're going for the turn one nat beast i would highly recommend using that line of thinking before picking your card but yeah then you just kind of synchro with these two and make the nat beast and then again i would recommend making nat beast if you have some form of protection for it because like a tour guy just instantly outs it but still very strong turn one play one other thing i wanted to show which i prefer on dueling book just because i think it's a bit easier to understand is uh, a cool little trishula play you can do with just like merchant and a kamoichi that's already been established which is like if your opponent enters battle phase and attacks this has to switch to defense and then it'll get destroyed um you can then special summon a kamoichi from your deck um which means then if your opponent passes their turn and you draw for turn you can then go ahead and normal summon the merchant use the merchant to add any level four to your hand and then use the additional normal summon and then you have a free trishula right here um which is really cool you can kind of like if you use you can use the additional normal summon to like toolbox whatever like type of synchro or board you want to get um which is very very powerful so i want to wrap this video up by just giving a general score on how good i think the deck is as well as how difficult i think the deck is to play or learn so first and foremost i think in terms of strengths i'd give this deck like an eight or nine out of ten I think it's a tier one deck completely viable if you want to take it to a tournament it is very very strong and a totally viable option i think you would have very good results if you pilot the deck well and have a good build um, that being said in terms of difficulty i would give this also probably an eight or nine out of ten i think that this deck for a newer player especially is kind of challenging because of those clauses like the must attack if able and then the fact that all those monsters have the weird effects of changing their battle position that can get confusing if you're newer to the deck that and i think because the deck has such like fragile lines where if you get interrupted you just lose it kind of means that your decision making has to be like really on point otherwise like a simple mistake can really lose you the game that applies to a lot of tengu plant decks but i would say car curry is a lot less forgiving on mistakes so if you're not as comfortable with you know the format or even um the deck itself i would you know probably recommend staying away from it until you get more comfortable with the format and understanding what all the different decks are capable of doing but that being said that is going to wrap it up for this video you guys and you know what the next deck i do an in-depth guide like this on is going to be decided by you guys i want you guys to put in the comments what decks you want to see me go in depth in i will even bring in other experts if there are people who i feel like know the decks very well or even better than me we can pull them in and have conversations with them so we can like you know have a full video breakdown of different decks in the tengu plant format there are a ton of different options available to play so you know super open to suggestions let me know what you guys want to see and if you like this type of content please make sure you subscribe like the video um and other than that thank you so much for watching and make sure you guys have a great time doing today